Rumpelstiltskin from A Wee Book of Fairy Tales in Scots, written by Matthew Fitt and James Robertson, illustrated by Deborah Campbell and published by Ichiku Books. Lang, lang ago, in the days of Lang Syne, there was a poor miller, and this miller had a bonny, bonny daughter. Yin day the miller had to go to the palace to sell the king some corn. He wanted to make himself look good in front of the king, so he said, See my daughter, she's bonny and she's bra, but better than that, she can spin gold out of straw. The king was a greedy man, and his lugs waggled when he heard this. Well, my manny, he said, send her here the morn. We'll see if our gold's better than your corn. The next day, the miller's daughter came to the palace. The king took her into a room through a straw and gave her a spinning wheel and a reel and said to her, Now sit ye down, lass, and burrow the wheel and spin this straw onto the reel. And if by the morrow it's no all gold thread, I'm sorry to say I'll chop off your head. Then he barred the door and left the lassie to it. Well, the miller's daughter just grat and grat, for she'd no idea how to spin straw into gold. But afore lang, the door opened and a wee wee man came in. He was the most hackett wee man she'd ever seen. And he said to her, Aye, bonny lass, here's a fine meeting, but tell me this, what way are ye greeting? The king thinks I can make gold out of straw, but I can't do it, it's no use at all. I can do that, the wee man said, didn't you bubble? But what will you give me to pay for my trouble? The lassie took the necklace for on her neck and honed it over. The wee man he put it in his poch, sat down at the wheel and burled it three times. Burr! Burr, burr, and the reel was full of gold. He put on another reel. Burr, 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 and that reel was full too. On it, the wee man burled the wheel, and in the morning, when he jinked it awa, all the straw was turned to gold. The king was fair beside himself with joy, but the sight o' that glistering gold just made him greedier. He took the miller's doctor to a big room with even mere straw in it and he said, Now sit ye down, lass, and burrow the wheel and spin this straw onto the reel and if by the morrow it's no all gold thread you'll leave me no choice but to chop off your head. The lassie was just sitting down for another good greet when the door opened and in loud the wee wee man. The way on kings cheat you, he said, it's a crime. No, what will you give me if I help you this time? The lassie gave the wee man the ring after her finger and he put it in his pooch and he sat at the wheel and burr, 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 he began to spin. And by the morn's morn he had spun all the straw in a bonny glistening gold. When the king saw this, he ran about the palace like a dog with twa tails. But he was still greedy for mere gold, so he put the miller's daughter in a huge muckle room where she couldn't see the windies for straw. And he said, No, sit ye down, lass, and burrow the wheel and spin this straw on the reel. Turn it to gold or I'll tack your life, but if ye can do it, I'll make you my wife. For the king was thinking to himself, her father may be a poor story miller, but she'll make me richer than a princess with siller. After he had gain, in came the wee manny and said, Ha oh, no lass, it's a queen ye are to be. If I spin this straw this time, what will ye gee? But the miller's daughter had nothing left to give him, so the wee man said, Tell you what then, I'll make ye a deal. If I spin this straw into gold at the wheel and you become queen, the first bairn you hae, I'll take it for my ain. How will that do? The lassie agreed, for she didn't ken what else to do, and on the way she thought, 
but it's the chance of me being a queen. There's mere chance of the sky turning green. In the morning, the king found the hail room full of gold, and he kept his promise and married the miller's daughter, and didn't threaten to chap her heed off ever again. A year passed, and the queen had a bonny bairn, and she was awfully happy, and soon forgot all about the hackett wee manny. But one day he came jinking into her room and said, Ha, oh, my bra queenie, michty look at you. I've come for my bairn, I'll just take him now. The queen was at her wit's end and tell the wee man he could have all else he wanted, all the riches of the kingdom, if he would let her keep the bairn. But the man he said, No, no, queen, we'd a deal work to it. It's no my fault if it does not suit. Silver and gold mean nothing to me. Your bonny wee bairn is what you must gi. The queen grat and grat and wouldn't gi him her bairn till at last he took pity on her. All right, queen, to save your wain, I'll gi you three days to guess my name. If you haven't got it by the end of that time, you'll have had your chance and the bairn will be mine. The queen sat up the hill nicht thinking of all the names she could, and she sent a servant far and wide to ask for any other names she didn't ken. And on the first day, when the wee manny came, she tried out names like Torquil, Dermot and Farquhar, and when none of them was richt, she tried Wally, Geordie and Shug. But to each name the wee man gied a wee loup and said, No, Queenie, no, sorry hen, that's no my name, try again. On the second day she tried out mere unusual names like Clarty Breeks, Loopy Lugs, Neatpeed and Jilly Fingers. But the wee man just gied a wee loup and said, no, Queenie, no, sorry, hen, that's no my name, try again. On the third day, the servant said she had sent a wall, came back to the Queen with an odd tale. A lang, lang journey I had hain, and I didna hear a single new name. But deep in the woods, last night I spied a wee wee hoose with a fire outside. A wee wee man danced round the fire, and he sang as he danced, and he did not tire. Oh, what a clever loon I he been, the more I ha- he a been a bairn for the queen, for nobody kens to tell the dame that the rumple stiltskin is my name, I nobody kens to tell the dame that rumple stiltskin is my name. So, when the wee man came in to see the queen a while later, she tried out a few other names first, such as Horace, Marmaduke and Jock. But to all these, the wee man cried, No, Queenie, no, sorry, hen, that's no my name, try again. Well then, said the queen, I'm done in, unless your name is Rumpelstiltskin. At this, the wee man flew into a fury, Somebody's tilt ye, somebody's tilt ye, he roared, and he stamped his left foot that hard it went straight through the flare, and then he pulled his other foot that hard he tore himself in twa. And that was the end of the wee wee man. And the king and the queen and their bairn lived happily ever after in their muckle bra palace.